Hi everybody, it's Danielle from Haverford Township Free Library and welcome to this week's early chapter book read aloud. So this is the last early chapter book read aloud because our summer reading program is coming to an end and that's when we finish up our summer read, our early chapter read aloud. So there's still time to turn in your summer reading logs if you haven't yet and if you still need some minutes this book counts. The book that I'm about to read to you counts as reading. So however many minutes long this video is, you count that towards your summer reading. Yeah, and if you were like, wait a minute, I didn't know I could do that, you can go back and put it on the previous log, the previous weeks, you can do that. It's okay, it's not, it's not wrong. It's not wrong, you can totally do that, you can go back, yeah. Unless you've already turned those minutes in and then, you know, there's no point to it, so. But if you haven't yet, go back and put these minutes in if you've read, if you listened to these stories before. So, this week we are reading something totally different. This is a choose your own adventure book. So, I'm not going to be reading the entire story because the whole story is different each time you read it. You get to make choices through this story. So we're going to read some of the story and then make a choice and that choice will lead us to a different part of the story. Choose Your Own Adventure books are awesome if you haven't tried them yet because it's like a bunch of different stories in one. It's different each time you read it. This week we're going to read Your Grandparents Are Zombies. <laughs> this is by Anson Montgomery and it's a dragon lark book. We do not own the rights to these Choose Your Own Adventure books. I am just reading them for fun and enjoyment. So, Choose Your Own Adventure. Your grandparents are zombies. Choose Your Own Adventure. Your grandparents are zombies by Anson Montgomery, a dragon lark book. Watch out, this book is different from every book you've ever read. Do not read this book from the first page through to the last page. Instead, start on page one and read until you come to your first choice. Then turn to the page shown and see what happens. When you come to the end of a story, you can go back and start again. Every choice leads to a new adventure. Good luck. You wake up on a Saturday morning. Instead of watching cartoons or playing outside, you decide to make a potion, a zombie potion. With a zombie potion, people will do whatever you say, and you know just the people to use it on, your grandparents. Making a zombie potion is difficult. The list of ingredients is long and some are hard to find. Getting a cat's hairball is pretty easy. You just follow your grandparents' cat, Petey, around until he coughs up a nice juicy one. You check the list. Grandpa, do you know where I can find a snake's hiss, you ask? He is eating eggs and toast. Your grandma is making orange juice. I saw a garter snake sunning itself at the end of the driveway. Try there, he says, scooping a wiggly bit of egg onto his fork. Can we go to the fair today or maybe to the movies, you ask? Turn to the next page. It's a test. You know the answer. Sorry, Pumpkin, but we have to clean the basement and spread mulch on the garden. You can help, your grandpa says. My friend Sally said you can see the whole town from the top of the Ferris wheel, you say. And my friend Malik went to the movie theater with his dad and saw the floating eyeball. He said it's scary silly, not scary scary. Sorry, sweetie, but not today, grandma says. I'm going to look for the snake's hiss, you say, disappointed. You find the snake and makes a sound as it hides under its rock. You trap the hiss in your empty jar just in time. Then you get out of there in case the snake gets mad. Turn to page five. Making the rest of the potion is easier. You add some red bug juice, dirt, grass, leaves, and three winks. Now it's ready. Drink your orange juice, sweets. Grandma says when you come back into the house with your finished potion. Please, can we go to the fair or the movies, you ask Grandma. It's another test. They have the shoot the clown balloon game at the fair, and you love movie theater popcorn, Grandma. No, dear, she says smiling. We have to turn over the garden and rake the front yard. Would you like to help? Sure, you say, if you take a zip of, sip of my zombie potion. 
You smile, your best innocent smile. Do pretend sips count with zombie potion? She asks, looking at a piece of dirt floating on top with grass attached. Yes, I think so, you reply. Turn to the next page. She takes a pretend sip and her eyes go blank. Your grandmother holds the jar out to your grandfather and says in a, a very zombie sounding voice, Honey, try the lovely zombie potion our sweet grandchild has made for us. Okay, whatever it takes to get the mulch spread, Grandpa says. He takes a real sip and it's a big one. Grandpa looks up at you and his eyes have gone blank too. What do you want to do? He asks, shuffling to his feet. We will do whatever you want. If you decide to go to the scary movie and get some popcorn, turn to page 9. If you decide to go to the fair to ride rides and play games, turn to page 17. I think I would rather go to the fair. So we're going to go to page 17. We go to the fair. We go to the fair, zombie grandpa says, shuffling out the door, scrambled eggs falling from his shirt to the floor. Petey the cat zips forward and gobbles it up. Then he scoots to freedom through the open door. Follow him, zombie grandma says to you as she stumbles after them both. You aren't supposed to let Petey out. He gets lost a lot. Wait for me, you yell, running after your zombie grandparents. This could get out of control, you think. Turn to page 21. The fair is walking distance, but it takes a while to get there. Your grandparents are even slower as zombies than they were before. By the time you get there, you are really tired and thirsty. Lemonade, uh, please. Zombie grandma tells the woman behind the lemonade stand. The sun is hot and the lemonade is refreshing. Thank you, zombie grandma. You're welcome, she says. Now what do you want to do? Turn to the next page. You tell grandma you want to ride the Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel is right ahead and it is a lot bigger than you thought it would be. The top is way up there. You are a little scared, but it would be nice to tell Sally that you rode it too. You were about to get in line for the ride. As you do, a woman with her daughter, a woman and her daughter pass carrying a giant panda. You would really love to bring in a giant stuffed panda to school. If you decide to play carnival games and try to win the panda or something like it, turn to page 24. If you decide to ride the Ferris wheel, turn to page 32. So, do you want to play a carnival game or do you want to ride the Ferris wheel? Hmm. Let's play a, a carnival game. You decide to play some carnival games for prizes. Zombie Grandpa keeps missing the basket in the shooting game, and Zombie Grandma squirts you with the water pistol instead of the clown that makes the balloon fill up and pop. But you have fun anyway. Finally, you manage to hook a rubber duck with a star on its belly at the next game. You win any small prize, kiddo, the man with the spiky hair behind the counter says. Turn to page 36. You look at the stuffed animals and pick a parrot. It squawks. Give me lots of crackers, buddy. Squawk. Goodbye. When you squeeze it. It isn't giant, but at least you won something. I will get cotton candy. Zombie grandpa mumbles as he stumbles away. Turn to page 40. Zombie Grandpa lurches across the midway. People run out of his way. A little boy loses his balloon and starts to cry as it climbs into the sky. Cotton, bleh, candy, Zombie Grandpa yells as he nears the cotton candy stand. The young woman working behind the counter looks up. At the sight of Zombie Grandpa, she backs away with her mouth hanging open. With the cotton candy seller out of the way, Zombie Grandpa topples over the paper cones and puts both his hands into the machine. When he pulls them out, he looks like he's wearing fluffy pink boxing gloves. 
Yum, he says as he starts eating the candy hands. You look like you're eating a giant pink Q-tip, Grandpa, you exclaim. Turn to page 43. We better get home, you say to Zombie Grandma. She nods and shuffles away to, away to get the car. Everyone is quiet during the car ride back. Grandpa is busy eating the cotton candy. Grandma mutters as she navigates traffic on the expressway. Back home and weeks later, everyone pretends that nothing ever really happened on Zombie Potion Day. No one mentions your trip to the fair, but there is still a huge sticky patch on the back seat of the car. The end. Well, that was the end of just that adventure. If you want to check this book out, you could read the other adventures. Find out what happens maybe if you go to the movies instead of going to the carnival. Find out what happens if you go on the Ferris wheel instead of playing the carnival games. There's different endings. Some of them good. Maybe some of them not so good. But it's your adventure to choose. I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you enjoyed all of the early chapter books that we read during the Summer Reading Challenge. Bye for now.